Hey there YouTubers, thanks for tuning into my channel. Today I'm going to be walking you through my emergency pack, my survival pack, and a few other items that I consider to be very helpful if you end up being stranded in the mountains with your 4x4, which isn't that uncommon. I've actually ended up getting stranded two times and having to be rescued in the past two years, but I have not had to dig into this survival pack because I wasn't stuck out there too long, thankfully. The emergency pack, uh, you end up using that a lot more, and these other items, even more so. Okay, so first I'd like to quickly cover these other items. Um, the Garmin InReach DeLorme. This is an emergency SATCOM, and I use this for dirt biking and off-roading, and it allows you to stay in contact with people and if you're in a really bad situation you can send an SOS and the, our rescue team will be sent to your location um, it does send a link on a map a link to a to your location on a map uh, via email uh, to whoever you want to send it to you know you can send it to a group of people there's different plans you can have for these I'm on the cheapest plan which is about I think uh, sixteen dollars a month or something um but yeah it's good peace of mind and it allows you to communicate with email and stuff you can have pre-downloaded messages and on all that on here so it's built well but they are pretty expensive but highly recommend if you do a lot of off-roading or dirt biking that sort of thing here we've got the gerber shovel um i mean it's a really compact shovel I wouldn't recommend a tiny compact one if you do off-roading in winter, as I found out, um, because you're going to be doing a lot of hacking and working extra hard to, to move that snow with this thing. Um, so I would recommend a square-ended, larger metal shovel for that for winter, but this one will work for you know, other general use. Um, I'm not going to take it apart because you can... You know, you don't have to get a Gerber. You can just look through what you want. Um, here we have a portable com air compressor. And anybody who's into 4 x 4 knows you need these um, to air up your tires again when you're done going off-road because you want to air down, you know, to 10, 20 PSI uh, for that gnarly stuff. Um, for winter, I'd recommend 10 PSI. For summer, I do 20 PSI. So... Um, yeah, this is just a little cheap compact one I bought off Amazon as well, and you can get a lot better ones than this, but it's good. And also, if you get a flat tire, I don't have a spare, but you can repair it and then pump it up with this. So, yeah. And the boots, these are actually something that I keep in my truck because, um, I'm usually driving with more compact footwear because, you know, driving with pedals and the clutch and stuff. And I keep these behind the seat, uh, which will keep my feet warmer. And they've saved my toes from freezing multiple times when I've had to, you know, got in over my head for the boots that I had. And I ended up switching to these. But, I mean, if you have an automatic, you, I'd say you don't need to. You could just bring good boots to begin with. So, but yeah, I'd just like to mention that. And we'll move on to the emergency pack. Okay, this is the emergency kit that I have. A few things that I added myself. You can usually buy fairly decent ones at Canadian Tire, for example, and you know add a f few things to them. Um, so I'll start with the outer compartments. I have a sock in here for you know checking my oil, that sort of thing. I want to wipe the oil off or just general wiping grease. Um, jumper cables a rope. I mean this is not the best quality thing obviously but it'll get you out in a pinch for towing. Um, Alright, here's the jumper cables. Both these things came with the emergency kit as you'd hope it would. Uh, those are decent jumper cables. Here's something that I added um, from Amazon. It's a little socket set with a mini socket wrench and it's actually quite useful and of course you're going to want a crescent wrench and pliers 
those are fairly basic. I had to add those too. Um, gloves for winter, very handy. And I've got this tire repair kit. I don't even have a spare tire, so this is a pretty big deal for me. And of course, you're gonna need the air pressure gauge, which I keep in a easy access compartment in my truck. This other stuff I keep under the seat with my emergency pack and my survival pack. Um, so yeah, you can patch it up. That I added to the kit too. I've got a first aid kit. I got this from Walmart, pretty cheap. Added a couple things to it. I'm not gonna go too far into detail. It's pretty obvious. Um, zip ties, big ones. These are very useful. All right. Notepad and a pen. I think you guys already know what you can use that for. Um, this is more like, I just have this in here for using to start a fire actually. <laughs> and this came with the kit. I don't know how useful that is. It's a sponge for kneeling on, on the dirt. Uh, we got this high vis safety vest, came with the kit. This came with the kit. A lot of useless stuff came with the kit, honestly, but this came with the kit. This flashlight, it's not too bad. It's got the red and blue flashers. Um, it also has a lever that you can pop out and pump it to keep it so that the uh, power doesn't run out on it. Um, what is this? Instructions of some nature. We have a screwdriver. Uh, I can swap out the ends on it, but this is pretty crappy. Not gonna lie, plastic. And if you have to really reef on this thing, it's probably gonna break. But I mean, it does the trick in a pinch. So there we have it. That's the emergency kit. Stuff you're really gonna wanna want to keep in here. First aid kit, the jumper cables, the rope, flashlight, screwdriver, the tools here. Um, uh, the gloves, I guess, if you're going in winter, and all this stuff it is not mandatory, really. Um, so yeah, I'll leave that up to your judgment. You might want to add less things. You might want to add more that I didn't even mention, but that's just the general overview for me. Okay, moving on to the survival pack. Keep in mind I made this uh, with multiple people in mind because assuming you know you have more than one person in the vehicle so I think I've got enough for about three people in here uh, let's start with this pocket this is called a pocket chainsaw and these are actually really cool and they work quite well actually they're not too much money you can get them off of uh, Amazon and you know they'll cut through uh, branches pretty easily like thick ones too um, so if something is in the way of your vehicle you can just saw it off in seconds with one of these unless if it's like you know a pretty hefty piece of wood to for this to not make it through but um, at that point you want to hatch it basically so I've got a little mini survival guide in here uh, I've had this for a long time so I just threw it in there Guess you're gonna be stuck for a while and I have been stranded twice I've had to be rescued twice in the two past years but thankfully I didn't have to call in the professionals so yeah this is a compass obviously uh, th that's it for that compartment and this one I've got a pair of gloves a pair of socks um, nice to have those for when it gets cold at night got a little flashlight and what you want to do with these is Put a little pl piece of plastic or a piece of cotton in there in between the battery contacts so that your battery doesn't, you know, drain itself to nothing um, when you're not using it. Multi-tool, fairly basic one, does the trick. Um, we've got a poncho, so that'll keep your clothes dry. Some band-aids, gauze, that sort of stuff. Um antiseptics we've got a emergency water bag so at least there's some way you can you know hang on to some water if you're in a pinch and you don't have a water bottle and uh, 
I've got some tin foil and a plastic bag, Ziploc. Tin foil and multi use, you know, it's always good to have. Going into this pocket now, we've got a couple of cliff bars. It's amazing how much you can jam into this little bag, which I bought off of eBay, I think it was. I think you can get them off Amazon as well. But they're pretty cheap, and you know, you can fit a lot of stuff in it. All right, I've got a thermal blanket. I've got some more jammed in here. Two thermal blankets. Um, so you can just read that. Preserves up to 90% body heat, multi-purpose, insulation shade, water weatherproof, reusable. I mean, they're not going to last super long, obviously, because it's thin material, but it'll do the trick. Um, getting into the main compartment, we've got another cliff bar. We have an SOS tent. So, I mean, living in luxury now. Uh, I've got a few things packed into here in this pot. I'll open that up in a minute. Um, matches. And if you're going to go with one source of, you know, making a fire, then I would consider matches as number one because a lighter over time, you leave it in a vehicle and the fluid will uh, just evaporate out of it and it will be useless, especially the, there's uh, certain types that it happens quite quickly. And we've got toilet paper. I mean, you can use that as fire starter too, so it's pretty good stuff. Garbage bag. Um, all right, I got this little tin. I'll open it up near the end. I'm trying to do everything one-handed right now. I've got a knife sharpener. So keep your knife in good shape because you're going to be putting it through a lot of use, you know, batoning wood and stuff. And here's the knife itself. Um, this isn't a new one, but it's not been used much. So let's see if I can pull it up. And what I did with this for storage was wrap the blade with saran wrap after oiling the blade so that it doesn't rust because um, it's going to be stored for a while, you know, and the vehicle, uh, you know, there's going to be condensation and stuff like a lot of temperature changes. So anything that is metal is going to probably deteriorate if you don't have it oiled. Um, so, yeah. This would be the shortest size of knife that I would recommend for a survival bag. Like, it's just big enough to baton wood. Um, but yeah, it'll, it'll get you by. It fits in the kit. It's all I could get to fit in there. Um, Alright. Well, let's open this up. Alright, I got these opened up now. This little tin was packed to the brim with cotton, as you'd expect, for fire starter. I've got a head net in here for keeping the mosquitoes and bugs out because if you live in Canada or someplace, you know, that has a lot of mosquitoes and stuff, they're going to drive you nuts at night. You're not going to sleep at all. So that's a big deal and survival situation for me. It's not something that's mandatory, but it is highly recommended in many areas. Um, got a fire starter flint here. So I've got a nice bonus backup in case my matches run out or get wet or something even though half of those are waterproof which i'd also another thing i'd recommend and right here i've got a little bag of carabiners they come in really handy um got a whistle here with a useless compass on it and a temperature gauge so that's a bonus and i've got shoelaces you know for helping make a shelter stuff like that stuff that i threw in there to fit if I have bonus room, then I'm going to fill it, right? Some duct tape. Obviously, uh, could find a lot of uses for this. And this is a really nice little pot and cup here. So, yeah, there you have it. And I'm going to go through the items that I strongly recommend and the ones that are just bonus I'll put off to the side. Okay, so here I've separated the most important items that I would recommend uh, if you're on a budget. Obviously, you're going to need a knife, this one, for cutting larger chunks of wood, and then you can baton them with the knife. Because you're not going to hack down big branches with, the, with this. You're going to cut those off fairly quick with this, and into smaller pieces with this. Um, and then we've got the thermal blanket for when it gets cold at night. 
Got to keep your body temp up. You got your pot for holding water, you know, boiling water if you have to, and food because I would assume that you've uh, done some research on, you know, survival as well. Otherwise, I would recommend putting maybe that a survival guide in with your pack. I got a little dinky flashlight here with some LEDs. I mean, that's something to help you see at night. Waterproof matches, a very minimal first aid kit, fire starter, cotton, although you can always use old man's beard, but I mean, it's nice to have this handy. Um, and then a multi-tool. You can feel free to comment below if there's anything that you think I missed. And here's how I have everything organized behind the driver's seat. I've got my pump, I've got the boots, I've got ratchet straps in there, a hitch, not that you need all that stuff, but and then under the seat here, I've got my emergency pack, my survival pack, shovel, um, and I've got a spare flashlight in the in that compartment, a spare knife for quick access, and you know, spare gloves, the usual stuff. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Thanks for watching and stay safe out there.